Guys, we are live with Jason Marsden right now, who is well known for a goofy movie, Hocus Pocus, which we need to talk about. All Spirited right. Away, Young Justice, so many freaking things. And I know like we got a lot of anime fans in the house. Uh, a lot of animation fans in the house. Yay. You are in the Legend of Korra. Like your mm -hmm. IMDb is insane. So you are such what an eclectic it? being. You have you have this backdrop for a show that you do. Yes. Tell us yes, all about that, so we can send these viewers there. Please, please. So I started a show when I so I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I moved here in 2016, and I was just completely floored by the local music scene, which is more than just country, by the way. Yeah. everything. And uh, uh, I started a show uh, live here. I called it the Mars Variety Show. And it was kind of inspired by like old Dean Martin show or like Laugh-In or the Muppet Show, you know, variety based, lots of different acts. Uh, uh, because the, the musicians are so good here that people take it for granted. And, and I, I've been places where like the singer songwriter will be pouring their guts out on stage for like six people in the back, just like on their phones. So I'm like, how, like the performer in me could not accept that. So I'm like, how do you get people to pay attention? So I, I use this environment. So I called it like a relentless good time. No one had a chance to even look at their phones. You know, there's something going on on stage that's done lights out stage lights up at the bar. There's a skit at the bar that's done lights out bar lights up in the middle of the room and I'm working the room. So long story short, COVID happened. I've always dreamt of doing this as like a TV entity. So I did a, a YouTube version of it. It's called the Mars Variety Show. Yeah. It's on YouTube. Please, uh, when we're done, you know, go and, and find it and subscribe and yeah. watch all it's like con there's comedy and spoken word and and uh, and me being a, you know, a, a nut. A and, goofy. And being a goofy guy. You have worked on so many video games. I couldn't keep track. I, and animation. Have I? I've yeah. done a, OK, I've done enough. <laughs> Video games um, is hard work. What was the first animation that you worked on that you said, oh, because, okay, so let's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm very excited cool. to have you here, but cool. you, you started working on film and TV as a very young actor. Mm -hmm. um, and I just love that you also have this like slew of work in, in voice work. So when, when was it that like, you know, you did all these episodes of TV and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm really good at this voice or I do myself in this animation. And then that takes off too. Like what was that first animated job that you said, oh, this is, this is my jam too. Oh, it, it, I was 12 years old. I booked the Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears. It was, it was my first, it, when, I, when I started, my agent sent me out for everything. Um, you know, it wasn't like my choice, you know, uh, and, but that was just one of the things I, I booked. And, you know, I grew up watching cartoons. I watched yeah. Gummy Bears and, uh, uh, I've always sort of had an aptitude for it. It wasn't until I became uh, like late teens because I, I was doing a lot of animation, but it was most of my own voice. And, uh, and when uh, Aladdin came out, the Disney version of Aladdin came out and they did a, they were going to do a, a TV series version. Yeah. Uh, Robin Williams was not going to do the genie. So I, I was like, well, let me see if I can get in on that. So I, I wrote down as many impressions as I could do. I went to my agent and I was with the youth division. The How agency old were was, you at this I point? I was uh, probably 15 or 16. Okay, okay. You go and, getter you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I did this monologue for him, incorporating all these things as the genie, but doing, you know, these impressions. And, uh, and he was like, wait here for a second. He walked me upstairs to the adult division and the adult division, that's where they had like Dan Castellaneta, you know, from uh, uh, the, the Simpsons and, and uh, uh, all, all these amazing voiceover guys. And, uh, and they were impressed. They, they immediately started sending me out through the adult division and they got me that interview with, with, with Disney and I, I didn't book it, but then they realized, oh, this kid can do a little bit more than just you know, the youthful sound. And then it just yeah. kind of went from there. I just want to sing all these songs step by step, day, day by, by day. day. By day. Um, <laughs> When you said you went overseas to shoot this movie, was it White Squall? Yes. Okay, that movie shot in eight countries. Yeah. Tell me about that because that's that's. Oh man, uh, I didn't find it. I just unearthed six hours of home video footage I took from that experience. Holy. And God. I uh, I've been I I watched it all last week and I'm turning it into like like mini uh, like a mini documentary series I'm gonna put on my YouTube channel because I think yes. people get a kick out of it. For those who haven't seen the movie you know, it takes place on a sailing ship that gets caught it's a in a Ridley storm. Scott film. A Ridley Scott film. I got shots of Ridley directing. I got 
shots of all the other actors being knuckleheads. I, I, I cringe at my 20 year old self. Yes. Out of, uh, out of my element. Uh, yeah, it was. It, but it was you, you had to have this sense that like, you, this is before iPhones. This is before, you know, anyone's like really recording behind the scenes footage like like you were doing like that's incredible you had a sense of this is going to be something really cool at some point you well, know I just, I just liked uh I, I like capturing uh reality I like capturing behind the scenes stuff and and I believe it was I have I'm going to do the montage of like of people being like get that out of my face Mars then what are you doing stop that get you know eventually they they embraced it but I had I had the camera like like we're doing this complex like effects filled shot with like water and lightning and all this stuff. And I just put the camera, it's like a camcorder, like a high yeah. camcorder, like just in the corner on the set and the, on the ship. And while they're rolling stuff, I could do that all the time. I'm like, they wouldn't let me do that now. Yeah, I've all, uh, it, you, I will show it to you, you'll see it. You're a Haku, am I correct? I am um, not, you, can, um, you could call me Master Haku. Master Haku. Yes. Talk to me about working on the, the dub for Spirited Away because that's like, like, like of anime, there are top things and that's just up there. Holy cow. It was great. Uh, I had, uh, you know, I've, I've said this before. I've never heard of Miyazaki beforehand. Uh, I, I wasn't, it's not that I was against anime. I just never gravitated towards it as a youth. Yeah. It wasn't a lot in, in my network. Um, so when I found out about this, it was just another audition. I read for it in my closet. And like a month later, they're like, yeah, you booked this movie. It's uh it's a big deal. John Lasseter, you know, is, is, you know, introducing, you know, his pal Miyazaki to an American audience. And this movie's already made like more money than Titanic in Japan. And Miyazaki's the Disney of Japan. And yeah, I'm like, Oh, cool. All right. Uh, went in, I think it was like two or three days in a, in a sound studio, just doing the dub. And I, I, I've always been, uh, been good at doing a ADR. It's just, it's like a game to me. And yeah. Uh, and they they only showed me the scenes that Haku was in because yeah. you know they don't have time to show you the whole thing, but they they kind of directed me as like you know what was preceding this, what's leading up to that, and uh, and I didn't actually see the entire movie finished for another three months after that after they got everyone recorded and mixed it together, and yeah. that's when I realized, holy shit, this is uh, this is pretty amazing. I never seen anything like it. Yeah, just the look of it, the story of it. And they flew yeah. me to Toronto to. Uh, for the premiere of it, I got to meet Mr. Miyazaki, Miyazaki-san. Holy yeah. cow! Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, he's a little guy you... like me, chain smoker, and uh, uh, super nice. He and his producer were super nice to me. It was, it was great. So I have a very, um, very personal question. You can decide if you, you know, let me get, let me get close or not. Yes. What does it feel like? to play a character called Schnookums <laughs> <laughs> in a show called Marsupilami. I just, I, I'm guessing I'm going to hit like a chord uh, here and I just wanted to prepare you. <laughs> you know, that was a big deal for me. That was, uh, for those who don't know, because you probably don't, it was a very short-lived blip in Disney afternoon history, but it was like Disney afternoon, you know, attempting like a Ren and Stimpy type show. Yeah. And uh, it was a dog and a cat. And uh, it was a huge deal for me because number one, it was my first role that I booked that was not my own voice. It wasn't it was like a youthful voice. I think I was 16 or 17 at the time. Um, Schnookums was like, he was like, uh, uh, you know, this Italian guy, you know, we had this, this big bravado sort of like thing here. And I was so happy that I booked it. And I was even more excited the fact that the guy that was playing Meat, the dog, was one of my favorites, Frank Welker. Oh, man. Frank Welker, who I'd never met, who I only, you know, he was a legend in my, yeah. in my eyes and ears yeah. from Gremlins and Raiders of the Lost Ark and Scooby-Doo. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it was just he and I uh, being paired up together. It was, yeah, it was a good, it was a good time. They're, they're great. They're very funny. They're, they're uh, very wacky cartoons yeah. produced by Bill Kopp and uh, um, uh, uh, Jeff DeGrandis. And uh it was a good, it was a good little stepping stone for me. Let's talk about Hocus Pocus. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I mean, you, you, I'm sure every freaking November rolls around and you get residual checks from Halloween because, uh, you know, we don't need to talk about like if they're a dollar 50 or $5 at this point, because it's been a while, but like, 
that movie is a movie that I will watch on a plane when Halloween rolls around because mm. it's just so much fun. Uh, yes. Did you get to go? You were the voice of yes. Binks. Yes. Did you get to go on set for this or was it like an ADR thing? Did you get to prep with the team? Like, cause that, that is a, that is a freaking classic, man. It's a little of both. It's a very interesting story. So yes, I was on the set, but that was before I booked the job. Uh, I was, uh, I was working on Boy Meets World. Uh, and I knew Omri who plays Max in the movie. I knew him from, we did a series together in the early nineties. And I knew Vanessa Shaw because we, uh, we had mutual friends. So I would go over and say hi to them. Uh, it wasn't until. It was just easy. You just show up on set and say hi to people. Like that was. Oh, cool. I crash sets all the time. I love, I love working on a studio lot and walking. I mean, I've, I've been on the set of like uh, Indiana Jones, the last crusade, back to the future Two, Dick Tracy. Like I would just hop on, like just to see it. I just love it. You know? So it wasn't until after they finished principal photography that they were in post-production and Binks was like, I think about 75% already animated um, is when they cast me. Uh, Sean Murray, um, who's a fantastic guy. We've known each other since we were kids. He was cast as the human Thackeray and the voice. And uh, I think he was using his own voice. And at some point, uh, you know, again, in post-production, they're like, you know, Binks is supposed to be from, you know, old colonial Salem, 300 years ago. We, you know, we maybe it wouldn't sound like maybe it'd sound a little bit more old, old world. Uh, so I read for it. That's what I did. And that's what I, and I booked it. And then I had to go in and, um, and loop that. And, and, and the frustrating thing for me about looping is, you know, I talk fast or if I want to indulge in a moment, I can't because I'm, I'm stuck to this lip flap. So that was the only frustrating part of, of that, but yeah. who knew? You know, the movie came out in July of 94, 95, and, uh, you know, came and went. And I never would have thought every year, every year now, people, yeah. it's, it's, it's a huge thing. It's, and it, seems, it just seems to balloon even bigger. So, so then Goofy Movie is another one of, like, the, the fan favorites. Uh, tell me about, about Max, and he sounds very much like you, because you have a really, really young, beautiful voice. That was a huge, you know, animated movie, you know? Yeah, I mean, it. It uh, we didn't know at the time. Uh, again, I'm a I'm a big Disney fan. It was a huge deal to to book that for me. Uh, uh, I again solidified myself in like Disney history. I mean, you know, Goofy's son. How much how much closer can you get? Right, lots right. of characters, you know. And um, uh, it, it was uh, I hadn't done a, a an animated feature before, so it was it was it was a more drawn out process as opposed to you know, a video game or a TV show, you're in there for like, you know, one or two days. Yeah. This was like, you know, a couple of dozen sessions over the course of a year and a half. And uh, it was, I just did a, a podcast with Bill Farmer, or Go Goofy, and uh, Kevin Lima, our director, uh, just reminiscing about it yesterday. It oh. was, uh, yeah, and, and, and in hindsight, like it was just, it was a dream. There was no real stress for me. It was, it was, there were things behind the scenes that happened like like the the mucky mucks didn't want goofy to sound like goofy they were afraid it was going to be too jarring for like you know in this grounded story of a father a father son to have him be like oh goofy oh yuck so they wanted to get like steve martin just to use his own voice they asked bill farmer to do just his own voice like just his natural like sort of kansas sort of like soft-spoken sort of sound um so that was like stressful for Billy, Bill. sure, yeah. Um, but ultimately- And he's also like the sweetest man on earth. My yeah. favorite my favorite part about doing cons with Bill is because Billy is like this, you know, normal looking older dude. He sits behind the table with his, his Hawaiian shirt on. I know, and, I know. And people don't know who he is. They'll see, they'll look, they'll walk by and they'll see a picture of Goofy and they'll look at him and he'll be like with his gla reading glasses on, looking at his phone. They're like, you are you goofy? And he looks it up, looks up at him. He goes, well, gosh, I sure I am. And they melt. They just melt. I love it. It brings him so much joy. Oh my gosh. Can you, can you do a, a Max voice line and I'll just try to uh, imitate it because it's fun. Yes. Oh, hey, you know, it's hard to be cool when your dad is goofy. <laughs> oh, hey, 
it's kind of hard to be cool when your dad's goofy. <laughs> I no, I lost it at the end. I don't even know. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join. This was super fun. Thank you, Craig, was fun. for watching. Um, you are so talented, man, and you have such an incredible resume. I hope that you Shoot. wake up every morning and remember all of that stuff because thank like, you. I, 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 I'm mind blown. Thank you. I'm very, like I said, I'm very fortunate. I, I, I am very proud of everything I've done. I'm so astounded at what I've, uh, what I've accomplished and, uh, and you young lady are no slouch. You are very talented and, and you burst with, with rainbows all, all the time. And I'm, <laughs> like uh, and I, can't wait, I can't wait, like the backdrop and I can't wait to share space with you again. And I hope so. And if you ever need us to reshare anything for your YouTube channel, I'm happy to retweet and, and share on the Insta because I think the more we cross pollinate our, you know, yes. our fan bases, they get to see really cool work that we're all working on.